A piece of black pipe insulating foam sitting on a small clock motor. Turn on a Dragon 100 milliwatt green laser. And just because I have one, I'm going to turn on a Dragon Red 300 milliwatt laser. Now the dilemma, of course, is that as it cuts through, the piece of foam begins to fall into the path of the beam, preventing it from cutting through. But then it cuts through that, causing it to fall down, and in time will it cut the entire piece of foam down to nothing. See the red at 300 milliwatts burns faster than the green at only 100 milliwatts. I will have sped this up of course so that it rotates faster and looks much more dramatic. The green dragon laser is a very tight beam but the red dragon laser um, not collimated very well so you need to take it down to a point with a lens and at that point we got some serious serious burning power of course you lose a lot of light through the lens always some light reflected whenever you go through a surface there's the hundred milliwatt green dragon module Here's a power supply that gets plugged into, here in the States, 110 volts AC. It goes to the diode head, which is heat synced and fan cooled. So there's a little toggle switch so that you can turn the beam on and off and still uh, keep the power supply going. So for Q switching. And then there is a serious, serious laser. By serious laser, it's, you, you, we can't overstate, this is not really a toy. Here's the Dragon Laser 300 milliwatt red diode. Once again, the diode head, heat synced, some optics, uh, auxiliary power supply, the power supply that plugs into 110 AC, cooling fan, little toggle switch to turn the beam on, and a pretty thick beam. But if you were to focus that down to a point with a lens, and you can certainly see where the beam comes to a point, place something there, 